So I got a CNN article uh, that... That covered it, but in the way you would expect mainstream media to cover it. Huge French pension reform protests. And by the way, that simple term is somewhat of a euphemism because pension reform, and the, the word reform was designed by politicians to sound positive, to sound okay. It's reform. Reform is good. Like, it's just a half skip from progress, right? The, the pension progress bill. Uh, but reform generally sounds positive. It, it is designed that way. So to even call it a pension reform bill and not a fuck the workers bill is a, is a euphemism to begin with. But anyway, huge French pension reform protests give way to fiery overnight clashes. Now, I know some of you may go, well, that's a uh, legitimate way to describe what happened. There were fires. It was fiery. There were clashes. Uh, but here's the thing. A lot is going on right now, right? This is the people standing up. This is the people demanding that their lives not be screwed out by corporate France any more than they already are. And by the way, many of much of corporate France is corporate America in France. You're like, like French Amazon, right? Uh and so those type of things, the French Amazon is supporting uh, screwing people in this way. But anyway, um, so a lot's going on here. You have people fighting back for their lives, for their labor, for their, their, their life force that they donate, that were forced to donate and wage slave jobs to uh, these massive corporate entities. That is what's going on here. But what does CNN call it? Firing overnight clashes. That's how they describe it. That's the reality of it to them. And I also think that by describing it that way, it is designed to actually keep a certain percentage of French people from attending these because they sound dangerous and also to keep Americans from joining such a cause, from this spreading to America because it sounds dangerous. It sounds uh, not pleasant. It sounds like something that is, is a failed state uh, rather than progress, which is people standing up and fighting back. So I think that that very much is by design. Let's keep going here from the CNN article. More than a million people took to the streets across France on Thursday. And by the way, I heard it was the others were reporting 3 million. So CNN may be here also downgrading the numbers with protests turning violent. All right. So we made it half a sentence before they said the word violent, right? Now, you could very much call these protests, you could describe these protests a lot of ways before you got to the word violence. Uh, you know, and as I've mentioned to you before, the term violence should be different for property versus people. These are property destruction tactics, not harm people tactics. Anyway, uh, so CNN couldn't get through half a sentence without using the word violent. With protests turning violent in some areas as demonstrators forced their fury at proposed pension reforms. Again, this is this is a positive thing. This is people standing up and fighting back against Macron's furiously evil, furiously parasitic, furiously extractive, furiously villainous actions. So it is Macron and his cronies, his Macronies. Where why have I not heard that pun yet? Macron and his fucking Macronism. Uh, <laughs> I need to write for those French news shows. I don't know what they're, how are they missing that? Anyway, uh, it is him who is perpetrating violence. They are stealing, this is extra two years, right? 62 to 64. They are stealing two more years of your life. That is violent. That is awful. That is fucked up. Why not call that violence? I mean, obviously, you and I know why not, right? Because CNN works for corporate America, which works with corporate France. They are the same entity nearly. France is essentially a vassal state of the United States. So this is CNN, CNN business to be specific, standing up for their evil corporate overlords and calling only what the protesters do as violence. How about the police? Uh, being called violent. It's the police that turned violent. They very well could have said that, right? Uh, to continue from the CNN article, clashes between groups of protesters and police broke out 
again, that is a the way that CNN euphemizes the situation. This is violence by police against protesters. I guarantee you that the first violence perpetrated was probably not by protesters against police. It was police trying to arrest, trying to uh, often beat. I mean, if you watch the videos, they're hitting them with batons, et cetera, beat protesters. These are unarmed protesters, whereas the cops are heavily armed, generally speaking. And so it's not clashes. Clashes puts the onus or the responsibility on equal on both sides, whereas police brutality puts the the actual aggression, the perpetration of these acts at, at the right point, which is the police brutalizing the people. That's how it should be spoken. French police said around a thousand people acted violently. So now CNN puts violently in quotation marks, uh, whereas earlier they didn't. So I don't know why now. A thousand people acted violently. Yeah, how many cops acted violently, huh? setting fires, launching smoke bombs, and damaging pro uh, property in the southwestern city of Bordeaux. Protesters, see, I pronounced that one correctly. It's not Bordeaux. <laughs> Bordeaux, protesters set fire to the entrance of the city hall during ongoing clashes with police, according to CNN affiliates. Police fired tear gas at crowds in northwestern Lorient, while video from Rhin, but perhaps, I don't know, shows authorities using water cannons to disperse protesters. Um, I mean, I'm glad they said what police did, but, fi you know, <laughs> wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be great if they were like, rather than saying police fired tear gas to, also they give the reasons that police do things, you notice? Uh, they say police did uh, police fired tear gas to disperse protesters. But when they're talking about pro protesters acting, quote unquote, violently, they never give the reasons. They never say protesters acted violently against police because they were being assaulted or protesters acted violently because they are having two years of their lives stolen. They never give the reasons for why pro protesters do things. They always give the reasons for why cops do things. On top of that, why not call tear gas chemical warfare? Police fired Chemical warfare, <laughs> perpetrated chemical warfare at crowds in northwestern Laurent. They would, CNN would never do that, right? At least 80 people were arrested and 123 police officers injured in France on Thursday during the nationwide protest. Now, see, this is the most propagandistic of the sentences in this article, which most of them are. But this one, 80 people were arrested and 123 police officers injured. What do you notice about those numbers? What do you notice about what numbers they're telling you? How many protesters were injured? We don't know, right? All we know is the number of police were injured because their injuries are the only ones that mattered. 80 people were arrested, which implies that they did something to deserve to be arrested. Are we certain they did something to deserve to be arrested? No, we're not, but CNN wouldn't say that. They're just going to leave you with the idea that the 80 people were arrested for good cause and the 123 police officers were injured for just doing their jobs. Goodness gracious, they were just doing their jobs. But how many people were injured? How many, how many innocent, unarmed people were injured as the police attra attacked them with tear gas, water cannons, and batons? We're not told. That's not in the article, right? And often you read these articles and you don't even notice that these things are missing. You go through them and you don't even realize, even if you're coming at it with an attitude of I support the protesters, you don't even realize that they've left out the amount of harm done against the protesters. Uh, now, here is something that's fairly not propagandistic. It says the mostly peaceful day of strike action, which saw 119,000 people march in Paris, according to the Interior Ministry disrupted transport networks, oil refineries, and schools. Uh, disrupted is a quasi-propagandistic term, but you know disruption is a tactic. Again, they're not giving the reason. Why were these schools disrupted? Why were these transportation networks disrupted? What was the point? Uh, of course, there's good point. There's good cause. There's good reason. It also affected air traffic with 30% of flights impacted at Paris Orly Airport. 
Ahead of the strike, French authorities had mobilized 12,000 police officers throughout the country, including 5,000 in Paris. All right, so there's a little bit more about what's going on there, but also from the propagandistic CNN viewpoint.